What's up everyone and thanks for watching. I'm Bart Koppens, a traveling entomologist from the Netherlands. Working with moths used to be my hobby, but thanks to YouTube, now it's my job. And tonight we're doing some epic moth trapping in Luang Prabang, Laos. So now I'm going to show you the field site where uh, I have hung up the moth sheet for moth trapping. So if we turn the camera around here, we see my field study site. This is where we will do the moth trapping tonight. And the idea is when I turn on this lamp, the lights will shine forward here into these hills and mountains and attract some nice species. And on the other side we have here a part of a botanical garden. And from this little forest area, well, I don't expect to see much. Um, it is lowland, so we will only have common species, nothing very special. But it's a test, because next week we are going to moss trap in the mountains. And there we will see many more awesome and rare species. But before we do that, we do a little test run down here. Probably catch some common things that will be good for my breeding program. So, why not? Let's go. Oh, one more thing. The sky is darker than it should be, so I fear it may rain. Now, if you go moss trapping in the tropics, rain can be a very good thing. Because um, when it rains, when it becomes humid, all the moths come out and they start to fly. Because humidity triggers all the insects here to become active. However, it can also be a bad thing, because at night it can rain and power for hours. And if we are this unlucky, it may ruin our night. So to sum it up, short rain, maybe 10 minutes rain, would be very good and improve our results. But if we have bad luck and it's like raining all night, yeah, that's going to be bad. So let's get started, huh? So the good news is, it started raining. And the bad news is, it started raining. Let's hope that this is the gentle kind of rain that gives us a boost. Another kind of rain that will ruin our whole night of moth trapping. <sighs> and I just check and change the bowl. Yeah. It's working. Okay. Still have to look. I think it's it. Yeah, I, yeah. For some reason, it's not a problem because we can buy it. Easy, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't see a uh, stand down. I don't see it. I don't see it. But here they don't buy it. You don't sell it. And this. Of course, I'm filming it, Pam. Yo, 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 this is dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> From Louis Bretman in the Botanical Garden. Exactly. <laughs> We step back. <laughs> yep. These are nice, see? Mm. Want to see if they can lay eggs? Lay it? Maybe. Oops. Yes, most of you know Limantria dispar, the big bad gypsy moth from Europe that's invasive in many parts of the world, such as America. 
However, not all the Limantria are pests. Here we have a male of one of the many, many species of Limantria in Europe, uh, sorry, in Asia. Oops. And some of them can be beautifully colored. Like this one. Very nice pattern here. Just to show you that no all Limantria are boring and pests. It's a f quite fascinating genus with a lot of diversity in it. Still hoping to get a female because some females here in the tropics get ridiculously big. And they will lay a lot of eggs for me. Which will allow me to do some faunistic research. And here we have a male of the Ischia, which is a type of Arabid moth distributed to tropical Asia. The caterpillars feed on a variety of plants, but usually on camellia, such as tea plant, which is a type of camellia. Otherwise, I believe they also feed on the Memnispernacea, which is a plant family found in the tropics. Unfortunately, not in Europe, so that makes reading them usually impossible. So it turns out that this hat is really amazing for moth trapping. Because first of all, you don't get any UV light straight into your eyes, which can really badly damage your eyes if you're moth trapping with a strong UV light. Second of all, you don't get insects in your face all the time, which happens all the goddamn time if you're walking around a moth sheet attracting all sorts of insects. And this keeps them all away. I know maybe it looks silly, but... We can call this the Bart hat from now on, okay? It's my special kind of hat. So, here we have a cage full of catches. It's probably not great lightning to film them right now, but as you can see, we have many, many, many species. We have many wasp mimicking moths like these. Like uh, here at the bottom. You see tens of them. Also very common is one type of tiger moth that I have yet to identify here in the top. We see all the wasp moths that I collected. Sadly I think they are all males, but I do not know if this species is breedable anyways. I'll check if I end up with some eggs tomorrow. Also caught one very nice orange and blue cicada there in the back. Okay, this video is not for showing quality image of moths, just give you a general impression. I also have the female of the Cricula that you've seen before. Huh. Interestingly one moth landed on my cage. I guess it wants to go inside. Hmm. So this is very early into the night. I don't know, I do not know the time. Let's uh, check it out. Guys I love my job. Yeah forget the lame picture I have of myself here in the background. So this is very early and uh, <clears throat> already have good results with a lot of male of tiger moths, uh, other species. Yeah, that's a good start of the night. Let's hope that more will come. Absolutely beautiful. Just look at that. Finally, I'm moth trapping in the wild in Laos, doing a biological survey, and this female of uh, I think it's the Cricula, Cricula Jordani turned up, and I'm very happy with this result. I will keep her for breeding.
Here's a species that some of you Europeans will enjoy because you're familiar with the genus. Uh, it's an Uropteryx. What species it is I have absolutely no clue. But um, yes they are in tropical Asia too. And I have to ID this species at home so you'll guess you'll see uh, the species ID in the video title but Regardless, I just wanted to show you this. Thanks for watching. I believe this that this beautiful pale specimen here, something related to the Acronicta. I have to look it up online after my bio survey because I'm new in the tropics in Asia. So I still have to learn all these species that turn up. So I have to do it all over again after knowing some of the species in Europe. It's unbelievable the, the biodiversity here. But uh, yeah, it's definitely something close to Acronicta. I guess some of you people may enjoy the color of that one. This way. What's this? Hmm? This? Like, yeah. But what species? Do you know it? No, no. That's cool. Yeah. It's like this rainbow. I can see his head. So this is kind of interesting. Looks like the male of some sort of leopard moth just showed up on my uh, light trap here in Laos. And it's interesting because I haven't seen any Lazio Campide here at all since I got here. They are surprisingly absent. So it's, it's good to see one of them. So today we are looking at genus Acronicta, a genus of tussock moths that's common in the tropics in Asia. They're very recognizable by their triangular diamond-like shape and very ghostly pale appearance. Majority them of them are white or transparent. And those of you in Europe may know the Acronicta el nigrum, which is a common species in Europe as a reference to these.
they can be quite specious. So after moth trapping all night, trying to catch moths, I went into the kitchen. And there happens to be the biggest moth I've seen here so far. And guess what? I actually got it. Beautiful. Hey guys, so I'm moth trapping in Cambodia. Uh, sorry, actually it's Laos, not Cambodia. I should stop saying that. But these little wasp moths are so common. I just collect them in one bucket to keep them away from the light because there are so many. They will overwhelm the moth trap. But it's good to see moths in these numbers still. Sadly, so many parts of the world are deforested and destroyed where it's hard to find any beautiful variety of moths like this luckily we still have the rainforests for now and the tropical regions I know what I'm saying will sound like rambling bullshit to some of you but it's half bullshit half of me being tired and just talking some filler bullshit <laughs> to narrate here with the moths but so let's just set these guys free I have no use for them they're so common here go there my little cuties come oops they want to stay they need not come nope Hi everyone and thanks for watching. 
My name is Bart Koppens, a traveling entomologist from the Netherlands. Working with moths used to be my hobby, but thanks to my exposure on YouTube and social media, it became my job. Thank you for following my travels in Laos and Cambodia, which is part of the video series that you are watching now. This is the outro video, so skip ahead to the next episode if you like. I would just like to remind all of you to like and subscribe, and consider joining my crowdfunding platform. Because as an independent entomologist, crowdfunding enables me to do independent work on insects and improve my YouTube channel. So if you are willing and able, please consider joining. And otherwise I would like to say thanks for watching and stay tuned for more insects and moths. Bye.